I just want to do the hardest thing I could possibly think of. And then everything else for the rest of the year, I'll be able to think. Well, it can't be as hard as that. We did the Kidman last Easter and it was two eight hour days back to back. Really? Yep. With who? With James. A couple of these are going to drop off because they're not going to be possible, but yep. I think we should have probably about a dozen guaranteed locked in shots that yep. are like high value. Yep. Thinking about what Matt's about to do, having ridden the trail a couple of times and ridden a lot of the sections of the trail, it's really, really hard. I mean, you're talking about 6,000 meters of climbing in 260 kilometers with no big climbs. It's all just constant, constant up and down, which is exhausting. Could be hot, could be windy. Even things like, you know, what happens if I pick up a bike to jump over a fence and like twist my back weirdly. Little things like that. I'm worried about the things I can't control, which is a lot of. The weather is actually looking like a real mixed bag. It looks like it's gonna be quite good to begin with, but I have heard that there are some storms expected during the day. It all depends on where we are and where the storm is. I think as well, like, that whole region, you have to pay attention the whole time. Yeah. There's a lot of rocks, there's a lot of bumps, there's a lot of water courses that go yeah. through the road. It's not like a, a, a tarmac descent where you can just like sort of tune out a little bit. Yeah. Like you need to be paying attention. What are your expectations for finishing times? Yeah, I've been thinking, you know, sub 10, sub 10, sub 10. It's starting to seem more ambitious, but like sub 10 would be good. And we can't talk to you. No. Can we give you negative feedback? <laughs> can, we, can we be mean to you? All yeah, you have so. to do now is write it. Yeah. Unsupported means literally no support at all. So we are gonna be there filming him, but we're not allowed to interact, we're not allowed to help, we're not allowed to talk to him. We are just background for him. Yeah, I think success tomorrow is completing it primarily. Under 10 hours, if the conditions are good, I think is doable, but that's gonna require, that's gonna require like almost perfection. Stop to us. <laughs> This is where we're starting? Yeah. Yeah, here I guess. So Matt's planning to start north, up in uh, Kapunda, which is very red, very dusty, very dry. And then it sort of winds its way around sort of the back of the Adelaide Hills south down to Wollonga, which is, you know, usually famous for Wollonga Hill. So it covers a lot of different terrains. It feels like you're in the middle of the desert one hour and then in the middle of a, of a lush sort of plantation forest, you know, the next hour. Like nothing about it in the process of doing it is particularly fun. It's the being open to putting yourself in a tough position and being comfortable with the discomfort, I guess. I'm worried about what happens between hour two and an hour and a half before the finish. You can't be switched on 100% of the time over four, five, six plus hour events. Like you need to be able to disengage the brain, run on autopilot for a little bit, but be able to bring the mind back to focus. So tomorrow morning, I have an early start, have some breakfast, and then we get up and we go, basically. I'm thinking 6 a.m. roll out. No, we can pin the door open. Okay. Just wedge some water boxes. I think I've hit that point now where it's just like, I'll do it now. No time to be nervous, no time to be scared. Just get on with it. Yeah.
about an hour in. The sun is starting to come up. Pretty uh, spectacular out here. Got through the paddock sections this morning, which are very slow. He'll be able to go quickly for the next bit because it's roads, pretty much. Two and a half hours in, so we're on track. But it is starting to look a bit overcast. I'm wondering if that rain that's forecast tonight might come in a bit earlier. Once we hit that first forest, things start to get hard. We have the highest gradient of the day coming up the wall in the forest. Is this like a potential like hiker bike scenario or is he just gonna grind it? So it's a hiker bike if you don't have the gears. I just thought it'd be bad, but I wasn't expecting it to be that bad. <laughs> Yeah, used every gear I had. And somehow managed to get over it. Then you get to Mount Crawford and it's quite nice, ripping along these sort of fire road, access road for the pine plantation. Um, but you can carry a fair bit of speed through there, which is nice. All right, hour four. We're 100 k's in now. 160 to go. We've just come out of Mount Crawford. Got through pretty clean. Just the one climb to deal with. And you can pretty much A-line it into Mount Pleasant. I went in with a plan of just keeping it really simple. Energy drink, that's just, you can get out the fridge like at any shop in Australia. Soft drink, because it's just a little bit of salt, caffeine, and a lot of sugar. So it sort of breaks down nicely into three main sectors. Kapunda to Mount Pleasant, and then Mount Pleasant to Macclesfield, and then Macclesfield to Wollonga. So you get through Mount Pleasant into pretty much the middle of nowhere. You go from feeling like you're near quite a lot of civilization to just feeling like you're out in the wild really quickly. <laughs> it's rocky. It's sandy, it's very rough, so that would have slowed him down. And also just for safety, he needs to take it easy through that because it's very easy to wash out a front wheel. As soon as you get out this side of Tunkilo, the gravel gets incredibly difficult. That's where it got a bit feral for me, and it was well, really windy, not so much wet at that point. So I've just ticked over five hours. Uh, the wind's kicking up, but the last section, which I was a bit nervous about, because it was very sandy. So we're seven hours in, 95 k's to go, 35 to the next free supply opportunity. And we've got a pretty big stitch up section to deal with in about 20 k's though, so. He's kind of broken the back of it now, so I'm not going to say it's easy to the end, but it's easier than what he's done. So, it's been an interesting couple of hours. Uh, that were the hours I was scared of. It's been very windy, very wet, and just bashing through unmaintained tall grass, pinballing off ruts. But just come out of Macclesfield, in my mind, from here I'm home free. So we'll see how that works out for me. Since Macclesfield, it's been horrendous. It's, it's wet, it is very, very windy, and it seems like it's gonna be a headwind for most of the last 50 Ks, I reckon. So I think he's gonna be very happy to get this done.
coming into the last sort of foresty section, it just bucketed down. Oh my god. I couldn't see because I'd taken my glasses off and I had contacts in and they were full of grit. At that point, you're committed. You've ridden 200. At that point, you just get it done. It's a bit like, you know, running a marathon, but you're not like, you're not a marathon runner. You just, you do it and you suffer and you hate it in the moment and then you get to the end. It's like a euphoric, like I did it. And like, I proved to myself that I'm capable of doing this. Thank you. 